The glory hunter holds that his own good lies in the activity of others, and the pleasure seeker that it lies in his own sensations. But one who has understanding holds that it lies in his own activity. A lot of us place so much importance on what other people say or do, as well as how we feel at a given moment. Of course, we cannot completely ignore all of those things, but most of us would be better off if we could put less emphasis on them and assign more importance to our own actions, as we have more direct control over them, and they are a more accurate reflection of our self-worth. If we prioritize others' words and actions over ours, are we truly living our lives, or are we living the lives of others? Perhaps many of us end up focusing more on others' words and actions because they are easier to see, both in real life and online, and they are easier to judge and label. In comparison, objectively viewing your own behaviors and efforts and honestly evaluating them are much more daunting tasks. You take things you don't control and define them as good or bad. And so of course, when the bad things happen, or the good ones don't, you blame the gods and feel hatred for the people responsible, or those you decide to make responsible. Much of our bad behavior stems from trying to apply those criteria. If we limited good and bad to our own actions, we'd have no call to challenge God or to treat other people as enemies. After careful consideration, a lot of us may realize that our dissatisfaction with the quality of our lives stems from focusing too much on things that are clearly out of our control. On top of that, we have the proclivity to want to label these things as either good or bad, rather than seeing them as just events or thoughts coming from outside of us. Marcus Aurelius is telling us that our discontent and misconduct are results of such toxic habits. Why don't we shift our energy towards measuring and assessing our own day-to-day -day actions instead? This change in mindset can help us develop ourselves faster and genuinely empower ourselves. You are not compelled to form any opinion about this matter before you nor to disturb your peace of mind at all. Things in themselves have no power to extort a verdict from you. Even if someone asks us for our opinion on a situation or a person, if it doesn't affect the course of our society or everyone's ability to go forward with their day, we do not have to give an opinion. Some of us forget that we have the option to be indifferent to things. There is absolutely no need to have strong or even casual opinions about everything that goes on around us. We most certainly have the choice to be indifferent to everyday events. This can prevent us from wasting energy on unnecessary drama or people, and we can find a renewed sense of empowerment and strength within us. Once we can start to devote our full attention and spirit to our actions and self-improvement, we will have a greater capacity to tackle challenges that may have seemed to be out of reach before. As Marcus Aurelius said, not to assume it's impossible because you find it hard, but to recognize that if it's humanly possible, you can do it too. The common lifestyle in developed countries today is all about convenience and taking the easy route. Sure, there are aspects where the convenient way should be the preferred method, but the clear downside to all the convenience of the 21st century is that the average member of our society has become mentally fragile and vulnerable when it comes to attacking complex, time-consuming tasks and handling life problems. Many people don't realize that the most meaningful things in our lives take effort and time for them to develop 
so we must build the capacity to face the demands of life. How shameful it is that, in this life, when your body does not give up the struggle, your soul should do so first. Marcus Aurelius knew that it was more often the case that our soul and willpower called it quits before our body did, and unfortunately that is still true for most people today. We must cultivate both a strong body and a strong mind to find our best selves, as they go hand in hand and can feed off each other. But more often than not, it is our mind that needs diligent nurturing in today's world. Not only does society entice us into seeking the easy path, it also tells us that all types of pain are highly undesirable and to be avoided. We must come to the realization that no matter how we frame it, life is a battlefield full of obstacles, both internally and externally. We can choose to let these obstacles get the best of us and constantly whine about it, or instead, we can choose to cultivate the strength to endure psychological stress and physical pain to better equip ourselves to live the good life. It's normal to feel pain in your hands and feet if you're using your feet as feet and your hands as hands. And for a human being to feel stress is normal if he's living a normal human life. And if it's normal, how can it be bad? We see so many people today, both adults and youth, who get agitated and discouraged by the first sign of physical or mental discomfort. Our society unfortunately has come to embrace a world without pain and stress as the new norm, when in reality, experiencing a certain amount of pain is actually quite normal for human beings. If we wish to live our life to the fullest, there will certainly be risks and struggles, and with struggles come emotional and physical pain. That is how things always have been and always will be, and gracefully accepting this thought will bring us closer to being anti-fragile. We can start to realize that the struggle can be overcome, and all the pain does not last forever. At all times, some things are hastening to come into being, and others to be no more. And of that which is coming to be, some part is already extinct. Flux and transformation are forever renewing the world, as the ever-flowing stream of time makes boundless eternity forever young. Both bad things and good things do not last in this world, as things are in a constant flux. Nothing remains permanent in our lives, so we must both come to terms with it and take advantage of it. We are also going through constant change, and whether that is for the better or worse is completely up to us. We can change ourselves, just as nature does every day. Just like how we cannot step into the same river twice, our present self does not need to be, and will not be, the same as our past self. If we see undesirable habits from past conditioning, we can, and are allowed to change that. We can start to value our own efforts and initiatives more than words and the actions of others. We can begin to make ourselves tougher and more resilient to hardships and discomfort. It is never too late to transfigure ourselves. To end this video, allow me to share one last quote from Book 6 of Meditations to awaken our true selves. Recover your senses, call yourself back, and now that you have roused yourself from your sleep and realized that these were mere dreams that were troubling you, Look at these things as you looked at those. Thank you for watching.